Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you the full painting process of my following illustration titled as Coffee Blossoms from sketch all the way to the final painting look. So in fact, for this painting, it was my first time dropping line art. In all my previous paintings, I always had to do the line art step. I just couldn't get myself to start coloring without proper lines. So for this painting, I decided to kinda get out of my comfort zone and try out something new. So I'm gonna show you guys throughout this video the process and how I basically did it. First, I started off with the sketch as you can see and I would say take your time on this step. I scribble around any ideas you get during the drawing process maybe change the orientation, the size, or even the shape of different stuff. And then I decide on my color palette. So I recently started using this website called Coolers to come up with my own color palettes. I will leave the link in the description below. Usually for each piece of drawing, I try to portray a specific setting, mood, or an atmosphere. So picking a color palette from the start of the coloring process helps me to keep that in mind and keep track while painting and also check if the piece is giving out the mood and setting I initially wanted. So after that, I just use the normal opaque watercolor brush along with the airbrush to just sketch color. This is just to kind of determine the color of each object and the overall drawing and mess around with the colors as much as I want. Also something which is really important to keep in mind in this step is deciding your light source so that the shading process and adding light later on during the coloring is clear and consistent. So I decided my main light source is gonna be the sun over the left side of the painting and since the building, the railing and the pavement are in the front, they cast their shadow on the street. And then, of course, there will be some reflected light from the ground and the objects around, but this is not a big deal for now. Five hours later. So now that the sketch coloring is over, I start adding base colors for all the different objects I have. So one for the building, one for the street, the sky, and so on. One thing that I also like to do is, for example, in this building, since it has like different materials, the bricks on the top part, and then the wooden like material for the coffee shop itself, I like to create two base color layers, one for each material, so that it's easier to add the shadings and textures later on for each one of them without affecting the other. I like to add textures to the different materials I have in the drawing. So for the bricks, I use this bricks pattern as a guide to paint the shadows over and also create some depth to the bricks. I used a brush with a wooden texture to paint over the solid color of the wood and added shadows of different tan pots and so on over it. For the glass, I used a dark shade of grayish purple and painted over it with darker and lighter values to indicate reflections and also gave the chairs and bread display inside the shop a silhouette effect. And then moving on to the sky, I like to start with a gradient for the sky base color. So here for example I use tones of purple and orange matching with the initial color palette that I chose. For the tiles, I also added this tiles pattern to help me get the perspective right. And finally, for the city lights, I just used the normal rectangle tool and added different scatters of light and then blurred them out and added the buildings in a dark color.
The most challenging part for me in this painting was actually getting all the straight lines in the railing look right without using any perspective rulers or vector layers. I know how beautiful and helpful vector layers on this program are, but since I just had this challenge set before I started drawing, I wanted to give it my best shot and see how it turned out. Also for the plants, I used this brush I downloaded from Clip Studio Paint Assets. It has a really nice leaf shape and you can control the opacity as well as the color gradient because it paints using both the main and sub color. I will leave all the links to the brushes I used in this painting in the description down below so you guys can check it out. Usually near the end of the painting process, I add the highlights and darken some areas where I feel that the light is mostly blocked out. And then finally, I add these little sparkles and the lens effect, especially if the setting is during the sunset, which is my favorite. I sometimes also use Photoshop just to add a curves layer and adjust the overall tones of the painting. I didn't have that recorded though, but this is pretty much what I do if I use Photoshop to fix the overall tones a little bit. I also added this nostalgic kind of effect at the end of the drawing and well, to give you a small backstory of this painting, I thought about this setting since like 2 years ago when I first created my original characters. So this coffee shop and bakery is owned by my character Sora and she's a huge fan of coffee, bread, baking and also fashion design. Sora wanted this shop to be like a quick breakfast destination for those people who have like busy mornings and can't get time to eat before leaving for school or work and so they can like grab breakfast and coffee on the way and also it's a good chilling place to study or just read something or maybe meet with a friend. So while painting this I actually felt like I have been there so many times and it just made me sad that the painting is now over and I won't be painting it anymore. <laughs> But yeah, so I felt nostalgic for most of the time while painting this and for that I added this paper texture in the end to give the nostalgic kind of effect. Okay, so tell me guys in the comment section below if you are a coffee person or a tea person. And also if you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button because I will be posting art videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!